Tuesday morning. Welcome to our Tuesday morning power prayer call where we start our Tuesday mornings with power because we believe that there is power in prayer. This morning as we prepare to pray, uh, I want to talk about fresh revelation found in God's presence fresh revelation found in God's presence. This morning, you may be wondering, okay, Pastor Kay, what exactly are you talking about? What exactly do you mean when you use the word revelation? Well, revelation is a word. It is knowledge, divine knowledge and understanding that comes from God. But this comes from God only when we spend time in God's presence. You know, I was thinking about an answer that I truly needed. Uh, I've been meditating, discussing <laughs> in conversation, conversing with a lot of with myself, with a few other people about a decision that I was trying to make. And as I began to think about it, I realized that I talked to my parents separately. <laughs> I get uh, godly wisdom from both my mom and my dad, but it comes packaged differently. You know, we all have people in our lives that we know we can go in and speak to, and we know it's going to be sound, truth, and wisdom. I talked to a couple friends and not, not everybody. It, it had to be persons who I know were not going to project themselves, but were going to allow God to speak through them. And then you're probably wondering, well, well Pastor Kay, did you, did you talk to God about it? I did, but I, I came to the, the understanding and the realization that as I was still waiting and still wondering, God, why haven't I heard from you? I realized that I did all the talking, but I spent no time in God's presence for the listening. Anybody know what I'm talking about this morning? Uh, today, I want to look at a very, very familiar uh, text, a very familiar story. You've, I'm sure, heard it before. Uh, read it before, heard it preached on and taught about. And I, I want to take you to Martha's house. I want to take you to uh, the village of Bethany, found in Luke, the 10th chapter. And let's look together this morning at verses 38 through 42. Hear the word of the Lord. Verse 38 says, as Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. And she came to him, Jesus, that's who him is. She came to Jesus and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Verse 41, Martha, 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 Martha. The Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better and it will not be taken away. Now, what we have here in this text is that Jesus and his disciples had gone into the village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. And she had her sister living with her who was Mary. And Jesus and the disciples, all these folks have shown up and Martha is, she, she's trying to prepare for her guest. And Mary has sat down at the feet of Jesus. I mean, she's right there at Jesus's feet. And she attentively listened to every word that Jesus spoke. And something happened in that moment for Mary. She received fresh revelation in God's presence. 
Oh, uh, this morning I said, I want to talk about fresh revelation found in God's presence. But Martha was in her feelings, y'all. Martha was very upset and she was distracted with the dinner preparations and she believed that Mary should be helping her. She brought her case before Jesus. She wasn't just going to sit back and watch this happen and not say anything about it. Mm -mm, mm -mm. And, and we see the question that she comes and asks Jesus. She's asking, Lord, don't you think it's unfair that my sister left me to do all this work by myself? And Jesus, who always meets us where we are <laughs> and speaks the truth in love, calls her by her name. Have you ever had Jesus do that to you? Oh, I've had some moments. He, he said, Martha, Martha, C could you almost hear the, the tender, kind, gentleness, love in his voice? He says, well, Martha, Martha, my beloved Martha. Uh, I've had some times where I've been in my feelings. I've been tripping. I've been upset. Oh, uh, don't leave me out here by myself this morning. I, I know if uh, we may not all be able to hear you because we're muted this morning. But if you know what I'm talking about, just say, amen, 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 amen. You talking about me this morning, pastor, that you've gone to Jesus and been like, Jesus, do you see what's happening here? Do you see this? And Jesus says, Catrice, Catrice, <laughs> Catrice. You, Catrice you, says your name long enough so that you can calm down, breathe. You're at a 10 and come down to a two. And says to her, why are you upset and troubled, pulled away by all of these distractions? Are they really that important? He, he talks about Mary being undistracted and that he won't take that privilege away from her. You know, I wonder if you feel like I feel today. Over the course of quarantine, it was an opportunity to become undistracted. Because if you look at this version of the text, that's what Jesus says. He says that Mary is undistracted. And the reality is our lives are filled with many distractions. We live in the busiest culture in history is what I read someone said, the busiest culture. Guys, we are constantly surrounded by, bombarded by busyness. There's always something going on. We have access to people, places, and things at the palm of our hand. We don't leave any space for stillness or quietness because the moment we get bored, we're looking at our phone, we're on Facebook, we're online, we can look at the TV, we can watch TV, be online, and listen to music all at the same time. But there was something uh, incredible that happened during the quarantine season that all of a sudden, all of those other things became very unimportant. And I don't know about you. I I'm just going to put myself on blast this morning. All of a sudden, I found that I had undistracted time with Jesus. Oh, I, I went to the garden alone while the dew was still on the roses. It, 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 it was beautiful because he walked <laughs> with me. Y'all, has the Lord ever walked with you? Have you ever just been going through your day and because you've entered into the presence of the Lord, the Lord is walking with you and pointing things out to you and, and showing things to you. You know, during the time of quarantine, it felt as if I had constant ideas and creativity and vision. What changed? <laughs> my focus, my level of attention, my level of focus on Jesus the Christ. Now, I know you've heard this text before, and the reality is that when we read this text, Martha gets a very, very bad rap. But if I can also be honest about this this morning, I've been both Mary and Martha, and I'm often Mary and Martha in the same day. <laughs> you know, I, I actually have to thank God for Martha's. Oh, because when I look at the church and I recognize that 
10% of the people do 90% of the work. When I look at the church, when I look at the community, when I look at our family, I thank God for some Marthas, folks to keep the ball rolling, <laughs> folks that will get up when other folks sit down, folks who don't wait to be told, but they take the initiative to do things, people to send out the text messages and the reminders, people that are going to go and wipe something down without anybody having to tell them. Thank God for Marthas that even though we're talking about being undistracted, they don't allow, allow other distractions to keep them from doing what needs to be done. But at the same time, often when I find myself in a Martha state where I'm so focused on what needs to be done and hear me out, we got to do what we got to do. And there's stuff that has to be done. There's stuff that has to be done to build the kingdom of God. There's stuff that has to be done to advance the kingdom. There is a holy busyness that we need to be busy about doing the things of God, busy in the work of God. But if I can keep it again, all the way real this morning, that when I find myself in a Martha state, that I'm so focused on those things that I forget gotten to spend time in the presence of God. Maybe I'll just talk about me so they don't give you permission to talk about yourself. I'm critical. I'm judgmental. I'm irritated. Folks are on my last nerve. I got to pray because I want to say some words that I really should not say. I'm drained. I'm tired. Even though it's good work that I'm doing, I want to quit. Because when I haven't spent time in God's presence, the things that are important things, I've allowed them to become more important than the most important person in my life. And I find myself overwhelmed, impatient, Martha was impatient with the Lord. Come on now, Jesus. Jesus, I know you see what's happening here. You're not going to intervene. You're not going to correct the situation. <laughs> I find myself like that. I find myself tired with adults who are arguing with each other and texting me about their argument. Oh, help me, Jesus. <laughs> I find myself tired about grown people who are whining and crying because they're not doing what they're supposed to do. So you got to do what you're supposed to do and what they were supposed to do too. Oh, help me, Jesus. <laughs> and you find yourself critical, judgmental of foes who have seemed to focus on the thing that you seem to not have time for, and that's spending time in God's presence. Ah, I feel Martha. But what Jesus was talking about was that Mary was so undistracted that he wasn't gonna take that privilege away from her, that Mary was so honed in on Jesus that she was getting fresh revelation. I read a book recently called The Posture of a Disciple. <laughs> that is disciples, that's followers of Jesus Christ. We know what disciples are. That we should be listening to the word of God <laughs> and that we should be sitting at the teacher's feet. That a disciple, the author says, is a, devoted to the authority of Jesus, the authority of Jesus. <laughs> Jesus comes first. It, it, it's not just getting up saying, giving honor to God who is the head of my life. It's really living that. It, it's really that Jesus is going to be the first person and the last person that you seek counsel from that you're gonna sit under Jesus's teaching. And that a disciple acknowledges the authority of Jesus and get this, and drinks in his teaching. Mary was sitting there drinking in Jesus. When's the last time you just drank in Jesus? When's the last time that you just sat in the presence of the Lord and just allow it to permeate through you? That you allow the presence of the Lord to just feel you up, 
Because if we're honest, we say, Lord, I'm going to spend this allotted amount of time in your presence. I'm going to get to this level of field and then I'm going to cut it off because I do not have time. I've got other stuff to do. But when's the last time that you got, you lost track of time in God's presence? And plan for it. I know that we're busy people. <laughs> oh, I know. I know about it. I know we got stuff to do. But when's the last time that you just allotted time in God's presence to allow God to fill you up? Here's the other thing that uh, the author says in this book. It says a disciple has his or her mouth closed and he is drinking or she is drinking in every word that comes from the Savior. Savior. You know, this really hit me because I go back to what I said earlier. Yes, I talked to God about my situation. I talked to God saying, God, I need an answer. God, speak. <laughs> Y'all know I preached a couple weeks ago. I was saying, Lord, open the eyes of my heart. I'm trying to see you. And then I moved on to something else. If I was truly honest, I, I, I was still thinking about it, but I did not sit still and Jesus's presence to allow divine knowledge and understanding from God to show me what God was truly saying about my situation. See, many things in life can distract us from the most important thing of all. And the most important thing for us as believers, if we're gonna sustain in this journey, in this race, is that we have to understand that the most important thing for us is going to be to spend time with the Lord in God's presence, listening to God's word. Because it's in God's presence that God gives us fresh revelation to our hearts, that God deposits into our spirits, things that can only come from God. And it's that revelation that produces faith. <laughs> See, it's something about when you get a word from God that you can keep on going. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. That you can keep on running, that you can keep on believing, that you got to spend time in God's presence to get a revelation. When we read God's word, <laughs> isn't it amazing how that word becomes living and relevant and applicable to our lives and our situations? And when you sit with God's word, you begin to see things clearly. God longs to bring fresh revelation to us each and every day. It's not something that God just wants to give us every now and then. If you're only getting revelation, a word from God, understanding from God every now and then, it's because it's only every now and then that you allow yourself to be in the presence of God. God wants to open up the windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing that there's not room enough to receive. And I know we only think about that financial, but I'm not just talking about money. I'm talking about God wants us to open up the, our hearts, open up our minds, open, allow ourselves to spend time in God's presence open so that God can deposit something in us that's great and mighty that will sustain and feed our spirits and give us understanding about who God is and about who we are in God. Can I tell you something today? There is no end to the revelation that God can give you. Oh, I want to say that one more time because it sounded so good. I want to hear it again for myself. There is no end to the revelation. Thank you, Jesus. There's no bottom. There's no, oh, you've come to the end that God has run out of revelation. No, our God is full a fresh revelation, the same way that God provided the children of Israel with fresh manna, with fresh bread daily that did not spoil. They didn't have to hold on to yesterday's bread. There was new bread for them today. And I declare that there's new fresh revelation for you today, but you got to come get it in God's presence. We have to position ourselves with a spirit of expectation, open up our hearts so God can feel us. What Mary did that day is she made room for Jesus. She was intentional about spending time with Jesus. It wasn't just by happenstance, but she spent time 
with him. She didn't let the affairs of life, she didn't let the distractions and the busyness keep her from getting the life-giving word from God. God wants to give you life-giving word that will energize you today and tomorrow and days to come. God wants to give you life-giving word that will direct you in all of your ways. God wants to give you life-giving word that will set you free and somebody else free too. Somebody needs a word from you that you haven't spent time in God's presence to get. And so today, as we enter into the presence of God, let God's words fill you. Let God speak a life-giving word to you. Let God bless you with fresh revelation that comes from spending time in God's presence. Y'all, we're going to be Martha because there's times that we got to be about the business that needs to be done. But in order to be effective <laughs> in the things of God, we've also got to be Mary. We've got to spend time in God's presence. So we're going to get ready to pray, but we're going to get ready to pray this morning, sitting at the feet of Jesus. And as we prepare to get ready to pray, I just want us to just sit here for a moment. I want you to block everything else out of your mind. Forget about what you got to do after this call. Forget about what happened last night. Maybe you woke up to some text messages and things this morning. Let all of that go. Let's become undistracted in God's presence and focus in on Jesus and let the Lord speak. Ask the Lord today to give you fresh revelation. Lord, I come asking today that you would show us those things that only you can show, that you would reveal, that you would give divine knowledge and understanding to us that only comes in your presence. Jesus, 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 there is something about that name. Just focus on Jesus today. Come on, just call the name. Jesus, call the name. Jesus, Jesus. Like the fragrance after the rain. Come on, just focus on Jesus. We're sitting at Jesus' feet today <laughs> before we go into the busyness of our day. Jesus, all we want is you, Lord. Jesus, less of us and more of you. Jesus. Just focus on Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Let's pray. God, in the name of Jesus, we come to you today, God, and we thank you for the honor and the privilege to be able to be in your presence today. We thank you because we know that in your presence is the fullness of joy. <laughs> We thank you because in your presence, there is peace. God, we thank you that in your presence, there is clarity, God. We thank you that in your presence, there is healing. There is deliverance. Everything we need is in your presence. God, as we enter into your presence today, we feel a calmness that only comes from you. We thank you for the lesson of Mary and Martha. And Lord, we even ask forgiveness for times when we've read the text with a side eye and we judge Martha because today we acknowledge that we all have Martha tendencies. <laughs> we get busy, we get consumed. There's things that we need to do. We get irritated with people. We send curt and nasty text messages. We get annoyed when people don't move as quickly as we feel like they should move. And Lord, we come to you with our hands on our hips saying, Jesus, don't you see this? Won't you do something about it? Oh, Lord, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy on us. Oh, merciful Father. <laughs> but we come now 
desiring to be more like Mary. Lord, understanding that there's things that you've called us to do. There's purposes and plans for our lives. There's work that we need to get about. We understand that you at even 12 said, I got to be about my father's business and we do too. But we also recognize that we saw many times, Jesus, that you would draw away from the crowd, that you would go to a quiet place and you would allow God to fill you back up. And so we come now today, Lord, saying, here's my cup. <laughs> fill us up until we overflow. Lord, it's your glory that we desire. It's your glory that we seek. It's your face that we seek, not your hand. Lord, we want your, the light of your love to shine on us and to fill us, to go into those empty spaces and those crevices. Lord, we want you to touch places that have not been touched in so long. Lord, somewhere around June, it's like, boom, the world seemed to open up and we just went back to business as usual and we forgot about you. And Lord, we are sorry. You kept us. You provided for us. You protected us. Not for us to just go back to business as usual. No. But Lord, you did all of this so that we could go back into this world that needs to know that Jesus lives. But Lord, the world needs a word. And in order for us to give a word, first, we need a word from you. And so, teacher, speak, speak, speak to our hearts, Holy Spirit. Give us the word, give us the understanding, give us the clarity. Help us to see and hear you so clear, so undeniable. Help us to not doubt what we hear. Help us to not doubt what we see, but give us the courage to move and act on the very things of God. I thank you, God, that you are an unlimited source of revelation. I thank you that you've got brand new words for us every single day. And all we have to do is show up, spend time in your presence and receive. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the word that somebody's getting right now, for the answer that somebody's getting right now. Thank you that somebody came on this call and they didn't know what to do, but they know what to do right now, God. Thank you that you're showing us which way to go. You're showing us what decision to make. Thank you that as believers, we don't have to go out here blind. We don't have to go out here searching. We don't have to call 1-800-PSYCH and we don't have to look up this. We don't have to Google that, but we can come to you, God, and you will show us the way. I thank you that your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Lead us, guide us along the way. For if you lead us, we will not stray. Lord, let us walk each day with you. Lead us, oh Lord, lead us. Thank you, God, for this time that we spent today in your presence. It's in the strong mighty name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. And the people of God said, amen, amen, and amen. Oh, what a blessing, what a blessing, what a blessing, what a blessing it is to be able to spend time in God's presence. So here's a few words that I want to leave you with today. And just repeat these after me. I will not, I will not, let the distractions of the day keep me from the most important place at the feet of Jesus. I seek God for fresh revelation and I find it. God grants me each day with my daily bread revelation that's found in God's presence. God is speaking, go into this day with your hearts and minds open. <laughs> know that you can be at your desk and enter into God's presence. Know that you can be driving down the street and enter into God's presence. Know that you can be in a conversation that gets a little bit heated and enter into God's presence. And I tell you, if you seek the Lord, the Lord will be found 
and the Lord has a word for you that's found in God's presence. I love you so much. God bless you. Have an amazing day filled with fresh revelation from God. Mm -hmm.